Thank you very much, Mama. Um, you will agree with me that um, she has dropped more than nuggets of wisdom here this morning. Um, I sat down at the back and I kept nodding. You think you know, but um, when you listen to sages like Mama, you then begin to understand that um, there are a million and one things you don't. Um, for me, it has been an exhilarating experience listening to you this after this morning. Uh, I have learned a lot, picked a lot of things. Uh, I'm glad that we have uh, uh, a mixture, a mixed audience here. We have the young, we have the not so young, and the not so old. So we are at the session where. We expect it's the we're at the interactive stage now where we'll be expecting um, questions, comments and um, please don't be shy. Uh, there are no right or wrong questions, there are no stupid questions. Please whatever you want to ask, feel free and I'm sure Mama will as much as possible answer your questions. Thank you very much once again, and um, I can see hands being raised already. Um, Tyler, my colleague, will be moving around the microphone. Thank you. We start with the director general, Mr. Diko Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I will use the same word that my colleague used, acceleration. Um, you will discover that your knowledge actually builds into its significance when you listen to people like yourself. Um, and it gives me a lot of trouble to discover that the Yoruba women actually have a very strong, or they have a very strong uh, past. And it is in bringing that past into the present that we can rediscover the strength and the power of the Yoruba woman. And I think it starts by every young Yoruba girl uh, in any environment to refuse to be put down, whatever the situation is. Part of it, and in relating it to politics, just like you have said. I remember the late uh, the State Deputy Governor, this is uh, you know, around the time that they were newly sworn in, told me that the only woman in their cabinet, they had to go and beg the husband to allow her to become a commissioner. You know, most of the women, they actually, they actually spoke to some women, they said, hmm, I will have them. But we are not interested in what you guys have been there. And for some of them who are interested, the husband would say no. So that this particular woman, um, who was the Commissioner for Information then, this is for Larry G or something, and they had to go and beg the husband to allow her to be, to, be, to be part of the cabinet. And I think that's part of what we need to begin to find answers to. Um, in Rwanda, I think about 60% of the women of the legislature are women, you know. So it is possible for our women also to raise their heads very high and begin to claim their space, not by um, agitations that are often misplaced, but by putting yourself also on the front line when issues are being, are being discussed and showing your strength and your power. You know, and then find the means and the mechanism to negotiate your way into the power equation, so that you are not subjected to, you know, women. If we have had the kind of women that we have had in the past, then we have no reason for the kind of thing that um, that we are seeing. And I'll get a bit personal. Um, I was discussing with my friend. One man who really did us in significantly in that area was uh, uh, President Thomas Sankara. Thomas Sankara found only Igbo women. You know. Useful. Only the women, you know, uh, uh, tried under his under his government to yeah. find the executive cities of this world, the because of the well as of this world, and so many others. And it never found one single woman, you know, okay, you know, okay, 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 and all those women yeah. in Laura, Laura, he never found one single woman woman fit for public office. And that was the that has done a big, big damage to us. Yeah. And I think one day when I see the man, I will tell him. Thank you. Um, my name is 
I did ask. I work for Job Commission. So um, I'm just going to make a comment. And first, I want to thank Mama for that. Let me use the word exhilarating again. Um, conversation of Yoruba women. I'm a proud father of a baby girl. <laughs> so, 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 you know, and when the conversation was going on, and Mama just made me realize that, well, I have given birth to a global champion. And, um, and it's quite refreshing and quite assuring. Um, but why I just want to comment on Mama's conversation is that in the course of that discussion, I sort of found an answer to a conversation I was having with a colleague of mine about why the Yorubas are not actually doing much, are not doing well in the market system. We were discussing, and I was discussing with one of our analysts here that Igbo seem to have taken over market in Lagos and then trade. And then we were saying, ah, that um, if the Igbo should go out of Lagos, then Lagos will suffer and all that. And I was saying that's not true. And we were sure exchanging those um, facts. I think one of the reasons we are not doing too well in trade is because we are not focusing on the women. From the history that Mama has pointed out, our women did more of trade in, our, in, the, in the past. They kind of were the champions, trade champions in Southwest. And I think it's important for us to understand the history of our economic configurations and why we are not doing too well in some areas. Maybe perhaps we need, in looking towards the women, we can get straight back in the Yoruba region. Maybe in looking to, because we are all configured to take or to play some certain economic role. The women, the outside, the, the, the egos now, when you look at the gender um, participation in trade, it's more of them than women. Their women assist. In Yorubas, it's more of women than men. In fact, men assist. I remember when I was growing up, my mom sells kerosene. My dad was a banker. So when he comes back from work, he only sits at my mom's shop, assisting her, and then they close together, and then they go home. So, you know, maybe in this, this conversation, for me, more like, looks more like an answer to repositioning Southwest to take over trade, which looks like is you know slipping off our hand. Mama, thank you once again. But it's just to throw that um, um, that thought out there, and then we can think around it. Thank you very much. Let's give the women a chance to call the. Yes. Please, your name. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Mommy, my name is Alain Inka Aguola. A lot of people call me Parrot. For the purpose of this uh, gathering, I just like to ask one or two. They may sound journalistic, but I think I still want to learn. When you were talking, discussing with us, you mentioned something about. Professor Akin mentioned that book on that um, efficient and you specifically voiced your own opinion that you think it was not fair to efficient. I I'll, I'll, I'll be happy if you can elaborate a little bit for our own consumption here. Then secondly, in present day and year, can we say history? I, I have a master's in history from the University of Ibadan. Can we say history is still relevant? What is happening? Are we learning anything? History keeps repeating itself. Where is the problem from? Then thirdly, I'm sorry. Why and uh, what results have been out? And we discovered that almost all the states in the southwest around 32, 31, meaning that people in Bono State, people in Sokoto, I served in uh, my, my, uh, 
I saw everything. They didn't used to go to school. That one I then decided to start leading us. It's something, Mama, please. What is the problem? What can we do? What can our present families do? Move forward. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, uh, my name is Omolara Olatukoso, and I'm going to be sounding like a broken record if I begin to tell you how interesting, how informative, how educative this session has been. People have talked. But at the same time, I want to say a very big thank you to you Ma, for coming and for enlightening us so well. Secondly, I want to um, commend the organizers of today's program. This is a, a great work. Um, I'm so, so privileged to be here this morning. And um, I wanted to say that this kind of gathering shouldn't be limited to shouldn't be limited because I look at everyone around, I don't think we're up to a hundred in this room. This is something that, that should be made probably actually. We should be struggling to, you know, to get a seat here. Um, I, when I was coming, I thought, let me quickly get here so that I'll find a place to sit. I was looking at minimum of a thousand or two thousand people here. But when I got here, I was so disappointed because this kind of info making program shouldn't be, you know, enclosed, you know, a lot of people out there should benefit because there's a lot of ignorance out there. There's something going on for the past two weeks now, I don't know if some, some of us know, that um, I would not mention name, but the wife of a traditional ruler in this country made some comments to say that she doesn't believe in this gender equality thing. I don't, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not a fan of this gender equality thing. And I think it's a slap on my face. And it's a slap on the face of a lot of men, women who fought for some women to have the right to vote, for some women like me to have the right to be heard. Like I'm holding the microphone now, you know, so several years ago, I don't think women's voices would be heard. You won't be here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, in, in some countries of the world today, women, some women still, uh, they're still struggling to, to, to have the right to drive a car. Some women can still vote. And, and somebody ignorantly, you know, went on a women conference in America to say that I don't believe in this gender equality thing. It is a big slap on my face and, a, 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 and an insult to, to great and real women who are striving very hard, you know, to help fellow women to rise up there. So I think with that, there's a lot of ignorance out there. People should be educated. People should be informed. And I, I'm sure that is one of the reasons why this organization is, you know, coming out to, to, um, to organize this kind of program. So the next time we are having a program like this, I want to implore you to make this public so that a lot of people will benefit from it. Because, you know, um, I was listening to Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's um, TED Talk one day, and she said that in Africa, you know, women or girls, we were raised that, oh, don't have, um, you can have ambition, but don't have too much ambition so that you have a husband or so that you know people respect you that oh yeah she's doing well but she's still under a man i'm not saying women should not get married i'm saying that there shouldn't be a limitation to our ambition and people need to be educated about that thank you very much i think maybe mama should respond to some of them oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the question of negotiation is still We, we, we have to have our own agenda and negotiate on that basis. But as I said, we've got to come together with the masses of our women. They want to understand. And uh, of course, the lady of whoever says she doesn't belong in them and I think she even understands even less. And I want to feel sorry for her. <laughs> um, um, somebody has 
set that we started with the last time. Actually, when he appointed these four women, I was quite disturbed. Um, I had gone to see him at the time, that I know him in a like this. And he said, Should I be interested? I said, No, because I'm getting to know that there are other people, younger people. And there was a lady in the, the city room. I said, There's a girl there. She's called between her so I think eventually he put her on a board or something. But um, then I found that he appointed those people as ministers. I called one of his friends and said, Look, I want to talk to you. Why don't you talk to this guy? That he's saying that we are no competent to love with them anymore. But the man didn't see. What he did was to ask me, Do you have a time? They have said the Chinese have gone so far as even to copy our designs and come back with it for us. And that's affecting not only the men but also the women. And um, there are so many other ways in which people are infiltrated. Um, in the past, I know that you had people like Mama Alaja, Humani Alaga. I don't know whether you have heard of her. She was a fantastic trader. And she, she was not, she was not literate. But she used to say to her that she's not literate, but she knows her mind. And she learned to sign her name so that no one can forge checks to her sex. And she went to every meeting that the educated women went to. And they encouraged her, even up to other than all sorts of cases. She would take somebody with her who is literate to explain to her, to translate for her. But um, I'm not sure we have that sort of um, people again. Then um, the question of Ish uh, Ishala. Ishala is my friend, a very good friend of mine. Really that um, I, I think he's also aware that I disagree with him about the interpretation of the rule of Efficient Law. Efficient Law was a dynamic woman. She, she might have her own personal reasons. She might feel that because of this warfare, they are losing on trade in other areas. But she represented a voice in the town which said, enough of this warfare. But I appreciate and I like to and the others didn't like it. And they had to find a way of getting rid of her. And one of the ways was to say that she engineered the death of her slave. That was an anathema. But uh, it was a rough and ready battle in the battle in those days. And there was uh, another person who was left with that, that Siriki Yapo. I think he tried to move a They just went to his coffin, raised it to the ground, and threw him out of town. In the case of the Russian country, she was actually killed. So it's uh, the question of a struggle for power. And uh, of course, it, it wasn't a question of her wickedness, but that was what uh, that was a wicked woman. It wasn't that. But, the, but he made the point that, that if it is true that she engineered the, the death of her slave because that slave was pregnant and she didn't have a child, then it was bad. And you know, as a, a theme for a play, it went down very well. But if some uh, records, in fact, seem to suggest that if she don't have a child or two, but she can be before she came to the battle. But that has not, there's no information to substantiate that. Um, then, the question of relevance of history, I think it is important, as we've been saying, that 
we must let our people know their past. And it has to do with so many things about our culture. One of my granddaughters is with me right now, the Duke Papa. She can, she can hardly speak English and Yoruba. And I've just told her that in this household, we don't understand English. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to speak Yoruba. So sometimes I forget and speak to my English myself. But it has bad as that. And we've got to let people know that Yoruba it's a rich language. It's not just that, but it is rich, it's picturesque. It sums up our way of life. And we must encourage people to know about it, to, to speak it. It's, uh, but some of the younger women think it's uh, they are one up. If their children speak only English, they, and they say, oh, my, my daughter doesn't speak your well. I see, and sometimes I feel like slapping me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we must, because it's part of our culture. And there's, the, um, there's there are no other groups that behave like that, like us here, but they both speak their language to their children. The houses of post. And when you go outside this country, the Indians, yes. the Chinese, yes. they speak their language. But they also understand English. So what's wrong with us? Why do we think that it is what of not to be able to speak our language only English? And then and I think uh, for that uh, the women have some responsibility that they, 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 they insist that you must speak, that the child must speak to you back. Then it is important. I know that English has become an important thing for communication and all that. But you must be able to speak your own language as well. And the, the mothers have a responsibility here. And I forgot also to mention the fact that the trend um, where I think mothers also have the responsibility is in the, the waywardness that we are, that is now becoming apparent amongst our youth. Um, for instance, drug addiction is becoming common. Particularly, and, and somebody was saying that it's more common with us, the, the young guys, than other groups. I don't know how far this is true. But uh, I was talking to somebody who works for NDNA and he says that uh, help, help people that we deal in that. <laughs> so I think the, the parents, the mothers also have a responsibility here. And also a responsibility about proper behavior. That they can't go for the money, they should treat your parents. Down of course, it doesn't kill you. I remember um, when they are big dollars, I think went to see uh, these uh, grandchildren in the years and also to the children. The children speak Yoruba, they prostrate when they come and kneel down. But that doesn't mean that they don't teach it. In fact, when you come with a doctor, one of them is a highly qualified medical doctor in the U.S. And uh, there was a time she, uh, she had to address some the, the Nigerians. She spoke in Yoruba to them. So I, I think we should be proud of that language. And if that starts, the women in particular, we have a responsibility here. I mean, just, uh, just let the people know that English is not spoken here, except at certain times. Um, the, the woman who is talking about deadline politics, I think one should be sorry for her. There are people like that. It's just unfortunate that some people 
are people who are speaking for us outside the country. It's very, very unfortunate. But I think people view that they will also have decent people. There was a time they, 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 they sent a group on the status of women, the committee on status of women, the UN committee on status of women. I'm told that we had the largest crowd of delegates for the conference on that committee. We, and the thing is that every year I think we will have to report what progress we have made on the status of women. We had the largest delegates. But when it came to reporting, our representative would only talk about the fact that uh, she's now trying to direct women not to wear a uh, go sure. mm, That's all. It's not good to have uh, the things that don't cover the needs. And they kept talking. Is that all you have to report from the idea? That was all. But fortunately, there was a dynamic group led by, I think, by Amina and the group that spoke of the problems that we are having. So the, the thing is, we are unfortunate also in, in the sort of people we choose to represent us. But um, I'm happy also that gender uh, studies is becoming uh, one of the uh, subjects that is being taught. I know that it's about what I said, you are now. It's, it's a very important point. And also, I think, super in some of the other places. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ido Wajibadin. I want to thank Mama for that very interesting and educative lecture. I think the problem we have, you know, is based uh, in the religion. In the areas of downgrading the women for, for example, in the church, they will say that um, they are weaker vessels. Even up till now, I can count up to three or four women in order that I've seen this week in the Bible. So I don't know, those men in order, how will they aspire to become leaders tomorrow? So I think it's, it's a thing of psychology. You know, if they have been, if, if, if they are able to orientate our leaders, our, our religious leaders, I think to go a long way to make the women who attain their, their leadership goal. Then, uh, secondly, I want to commend Don for this very, very um, great job. It's a great job because this is one of the projects that, you know, uh, has uh, continued to survive. I remember when I was doing my master's in 2013, I, I actually wrote on the history of Uruguay Investment Limited, 1967-2012. While I was concluding my work, I stumbled on the blueprints of Dawn. And I said, wow, this is what I've been looking for. I think Uruguay now has something better for the younger generation. However, when I came here, this is a, a sort of recommendation anyway. When I came, I met with Mr. Christopher, uh, Mr. Victor, and Christopher, and you, sir. Yeah, you. Well, I was not, I was not, I was not welcomed with an open arm because uh, the materials I needed, I was not given. I want to recommend, sir, that I don't know if it's already in the offing that there should be a library here and even maybe archives so that scholars who want to write about Yoruba history. You know, history has gone beyond the realm of storytelling. We want to know what happened to somebody like Awolo. You know, I, I'm, presently I'm a PhD student, my second year doing my PhD, and I'm, I'm one of the, um, let me say, um, um, fortunate history teacher in the secondary school. 
And then you use the word of tragedy. So when, when I came here, I, even, I, I think Mr. Adebayo was the chairman then. You know, in this street, Mama will be a witness. She is a great grand teacher. Unfortunately, she didn't teach me in the classroom. What I've listened to today has covered a lot of ground. Now, when I approached Ombra Investments, that I needed to speak with Mr. Adebayo, at least for my oral source, I was turned back. Please allow me access to him. Just the word. I even went to a I, you know, I, I messaged him. Somebody said, uh, he had traveled around that you come. I always came. You know, I went and, and, and in fact, I came to this place for more than 20 times, but I couldn't see him. Uh, it was a stage when I wanted to abandon that topic. Because when I was choosing the topic, my Supervisor said, are you sure you are not going to be stuck with this topic? Ah, no, I will get materials and all that. I never knew I would not get enough materials. Thank God for the tribute. It was the tribute that actually came to my rescue. I was able to complete the topic. And out of that book, uh, out of that project, I have been able to bring out two very good papers published abroad. So I want to thank you especially because it gave me a lot of materials people who prevented me from seeing the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> so generally I want to thank John and I want you to continue with this work. It's very, very good. It's good to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm a typical Yoruba woman, even though I've been abroad for almost 35 to 40 years. And I made a decision last year in my process of coming back to Nigeria. When I listen to your lecture today, I have two questions that I think is fundamentally important from what I picked. I think we, in the past we have identified that we have a very, very strong women and leaders within the Yoruba in general. I think even in abroad, you will see that Yoruba women are still traders. And if you are a frequent goer of UK, you will notice that Liverpool Street has been taken over from the Jews by the Yoruba traders. We will always be traders. I, uh, that's my fundamental belief. But my question that I want to is, when you talk of the present, I looked when they said they appointed commissioner, I saw only one lady. It's just out of interest I, I looked at it. And I know the lady that is appointed is even from abroad. And there are so many fundamentally women in Ibadan especially. They said if you want to begin something, you begin from your source. What happened and how can we close the gap between the elite and the market women for them to start to communicate and become one? I think we have identified the problem, but the first question is, how do we do it? Because it's very common for Nigerians to identify problems. Then the question is, how do we resolve this problem to bring women back to the forefront of the Yoruba cult? The second question that I want to say is, our elders, I think, have you forgotten the younger ones? I, I believe I'm still very young. And I believe that if you don't, and I grew up with elderly people, like mommy, she's actually, she, um, when she sent the last email you sent to me, I struggled to read your bad photo, but I succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, because if you don't teach us, how do we learn? If you don't show us what the history is, British people are doing it, Americans are doing it, Germans, even Russians are doing it. Even the Pakistans and the Chinas we're talking, they're bringing their children to know the values of us. How does the elderly then bring us the young ones, especially women? I know our men are there and we know what they are. But I'm talking solely about our women. How do we bring our women to understand what their role is within the society? Thank you. 
The question is uh, talking about professional women. Um, I know that maybe you can share your perspective with us because I know in, in the, the, the women that you mentioned in the past, they seem to uh, be able to manage uh, their career life and marital life. But uh, these days, uh, we discover that uh, for most career women, the turnover uh, in their marital life is very high. So uh, maybe you can also share with us what they were doing then that they were able to manage their own front uh, as well as uh, their, uh, their career and uh, what we are doing right now. Uh, these days I write to women, you know, if we want to uh, have an uh, event and we want to invite. So most times I have to be sure if this woman, if this person I'm writing to is a Mrs. MRS or MS, really, you know, because uh, you discover that the career women, a lot of them, um, are maybe are no longer MRS, they are MS. So. Maybe you didn't ask well. How did mommy do it? Yeah. She became a professor. Yeah. She, she's a mother, a grandmother. What did she do right that we can learn from her? That's, that's, that's the question. That's the question. Uh, <laughs>